Your recording location will help you determine your recording equipment. If you have the luxury of having a studio, you have climate control, you can really control the sound, the reverb. You also have most likely continuous power. Uh, you can use computers, you have sliders, you have monitor speakers. Uh, it's just a nice luxury. And so that's a ideal place to do a recording. But if you don't have that um, situation, a room like a library or office that has a lot of bumpy edges don't get rooms with flat walls. Flat walls really echo a lot. If you do have a room that's fairly empty, use mattresses, curtains. You can't just put a flat blanket against the wall. It has to be all crumpled up so it breaks up the, the reverb or echo. But whenever I go into a re room to do recording, I clap and I listen to hear if I have any strange echoes or, or anything like that. If I do, I've thrown boxes in the corner, I've put up mattresses, uh, I've even put books up, uh, just even putting other objects in the room that might even be hard to just make the echo just go away. Also, uh, it might be a remote location. I would probably say I do the majority of my recordings out in the jungle. And so that greatly impacts. I have a lot more noises. I have things like chickens, birds, pigs, children, lots of different things that I have to deal with. So typically I use a head-worn microphone in those locations, uh, but you'll have to work with that. So there's no one... Um, mic fits all solutions. Your recording equipment will be uh, determined too uh, by your location. Digital recorders, cell phones uh, will work for you. If you're traveling a lot, you're doing small recordings, short recordings, uh, use devices like this. They have their advantages being small, they run on batteries, they can go a long time. You can take them to remote locations that easily fit into your pocket. Uh, someone without computer skills can use this. I've trained uh, people that don't have computer skills to be able to do recordings on this, and they're very acceptable recordings, and someone else does the editing. The disadvantage of these are it's typically hard to name files or actually edit it. Now with cell phones, it's getting a little bit easier with the really uh, smartphones. Uh, but typically it's a lot more difficult to do any editing. So you do the capturing there, bring it back, and edit it on the computer. Ideally, if you're going to be doing uh, large sections of recording, music, um, scripture, it's much easier to do it on a computer. You can uh, record it in, edit on the fly, delete things that are not uh, correct, um, you can also add other things. We have a microphone here, but I like to use uh, preamps, uh, gates, and compressors before it even hits my sound card. Uh, but the disadvantage is as it's bigger, it's heavier, it needs more power, so you only maybe be limited to four to eight hours on a digital recorder. You might have more. And the person needs to be skilled to be, be able to do the recording so that might not be your situation. Microphones. Like I said, there's no one mic that fits all situations. But a couple of things about microphones is every microphone has a sweet spot. Kind of a rule of thumb, I got this picture off the internet, is about uh, 20 centimeters or whatever, just a span of your fingers there. Um, you need air to get to the microphone. Uh, if the microphone is really close, you'll get a muffling noise. You can hear, even in my recording here, you hear a lot of mouth noises and more nasally. And I'm not EQing my project here. So have the microphone at a good distance. When the person speaks to, don't let the person speak straight into the microphone um, because you'll get the percussive P's and B's that will actually hit the microphone and make a, a popping sound. So you could use a pop filter, but we typically put the microphone up above the person's eye because they're reading down below. 
if you use a head warm microphone, which I use uh, quite often, is you want to make sure that the microphone is not in front of the person's mouth for the same reasons. You don't want the P's and B's. So I have it typically behind the corner of their mouth and probably two to three fingers widths away from the person's mouth. Make sure that uh, I have people that have big beards and mustaches quite often that uh, the mustache or beard is not rubbing on that microphone. I've just heard this rustle, rustle. What is it? Well, it's these wild beard hairs that are rubbing all over the microphone. So just be aware of that. Here's a situation. We were in a studio. Uh, my friend was doing the recording here, and we're in our little studio here. There's pillows on the walls to kill, kill the sound. But if you look at it, we have the microphone here up above the person so it's not in their way and it's pointing down at their mouth. Yes, this is a little bit farther away, but it, we had a really quiet situation and this mic picks up quite well from a far distance. If it was a little bit uh, more of a dynamic mic, it'd have to be a lot closer to the person. We have headphones so that they can hear the people in the recording room so they can talk back to him and he can hear it. But if they do talk, it doesn't go into the bleeding, does not bleed into the microphone. We have a stand. You can see that his hands are off, so there's no rustling. So when he changes the pages, he'll read, he'll pause, turn the page, and then continue to read. And we just can edit out that pause. We have some foam underneath this cloth, so we don't, when he speaks, it doesn't have a unique reverb or sound off this. You'll notice also, uh, this is we do this because we have the person up against the wall. This is a padded wall. Corners are not good. This is not the ideal situation, but we found that in our location that people would just move away from the microphone. Even we'd stick them in the middle of the room. Next thing you know, they picked up the music stand and the chair, and they've moved back. They moved back. They moved back. They move back, and all of a sudden, it's like, why does it sound so distant? Well, they're quite a distance away from the microphone. So we actually pin them in here so they can't move back any farther, and that solved a problem. Might create a couple other ones, but it's the better solution. Also, when you have your microphones, you can use your microphone on your laptop. The quality is going to be poor. But if that's the situation that you have, use that. You can take it and you can plug it into the computer on the side here. You're going to get a lot more noise from your computer. Inside a laptop, it's quite noisy. You're going to get hums, buzzes, and things like that. So if you're going to do a significant amount of recording, we suggest that you have some kind of external sound card. I'm using the Scarlett um, right now, this time of my life. I've used other ones. I always use headphones so you can hear uh, the recording well. When they're recording, you can hear any noises that should not be there. Um, you just can do a lot better editing. Typically, I have one ear on, one ear off. And a key thing I want to make sure that you know is that make sure the people that are doing the narration, doing the talking, drinks plenty of water. My rule is that they have to drink at least 500 milliliters of water a half hour before they do the recording. I tell them they can get up and use the facilities if they need to, as many times as they want to. But if you start hearing a lot of noise, noises and smacks and stuff like that, it's because their body's dry. Not because their mouth is dry. Well, their mouth is dry because their body is dry. So taking a drink of water right now if my mouth was dry, would not solve the problem because my body is dry. Um, so if someone's mouth is dry and making a lot of noise, sit there, watch them drink 500 milliliters of water, have them sit down, bring someone else in, have them do their part of recording, and then swap back out about a half hour later.